Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today we're down at the University of Alberta Botanical Gardens here in the southwest of Edmonton. Just entered in through the Kuramoto Japanese Gardens. We're gonna take a walk through here, check out some of the plants, and then there's an alpine garden, there's an agakar garden, and a bunch of other stuff. So we're gonna go check out all the different venues and kiosks and stuff throughout the gardens. Stay tuned, should be a pretty good video. So we're just making our way through the Japanese garden here and we made it up to the bell tower. They got a little cover here. You got the bell and then you got like the log that you would push in to ring the bell. Kind of cool. Uh, yeah, we'll continue on and uh, check out the rest of this place. It's uh, quite stunning. Hey guys, so we just entered the arid room and then right next door is the warm temperate house. So we'll check out some of the plants and cactuses through here. It looks pretty cool. All right, so we're in the more tropical humid butterfly area, but unfortunately today the butterflies are not available for whatever reason, but we'll take a look at some of the plants, quite nice. All right, so we just entered the Aga Khan garden. Never been in this section before, so we're gonna check it out. It's on these uh, metal pathways, which is kind of cool. Makes it real easy for walking. And uh, yeah, we'll just uh, get up here and have a look. All right, so we are up at the Aga Khan garden now. Took the back path in and it's like this huge concrete, almost like a monument. There's all kinds of uh, information here about Aga Khan awards for architecture around the world, everywhere from Iran to Lebanon to Senegal. And then down here, there's like a water feature, but not a huge amount of plants for a garden. There's like a few, we'll go down and take a quick closer look, but a lot of, uh, a lot of concrete. So um, I'm gonna say it's more of a monument or a memorial versus a garden section, but we'll go down and have a look. So overall, this part of the garden, it's actually quite nice, but not a whole lot of plants as you see. Like I said earlier, more of a monument, but uh, we're stopping by since it's included in the admission here. And uh, here's a big lake. And there is quite a few ducks and waterfowl around. We'll walk back here and uh, take a loop around there, check it out. Not sure what this is, some sort of algae maybe. It's kind of neat looking. Uh, hopefully it shows up in the camera. Almost looks like that textured stuff you put in the back of a truck bed that they spray on. It's kind of, kind of neat looking. All right, so we made it down to an area of the garden called the Collections, so they have a bunch of small gardens basically like a primula garden a rose garden and then some gardens named after some people we're just walking through them now so we'll go take a little peek around and uh, check this place out see what's here so we made it to the end of the collections we're down here in the indigenous garden they have a few uh, little artwork pieces, some gardens, lots of trees, and a nice little gazebo, and it's surrounded by water, a little bridge to go back over. So kind of a nice place just to hang out and take in the fresh air. It's absolutely beautiful here. So behind me are the dining tents, and I don't believe they're used in the summer, but in the winter months, uh, especially around Christmas, they do a little light festival here. Uh, it's called Luminary, it's pretty cool. I'll actually link, I shot a video here last December. I'll link it below, come check it out. It's really cool, but you, you can buy a dining option and they serve you like dinner under these tents and it's all lit up. 
So pretty cool if you want to come check that out in the winter. So when you're near the end of the botanical gardens, just before the alpine section, you'll find the rose garden here. They have a couple little seating areas along and a bunch of beds full of roses. Nice job they did down here. So we'll head over to the alpine forest. All right, well, here's something you don't see in a botanical garden every day. You know you're in Alberta oil country when, here you go, an oil well, right in the middle of the botanical garden. They got a little sign here by Esso says that uh, they've been drilling around here since about 1947. Over a thousand wells have been drilled in this region and they took out something like 35 million cubic uh, meters of oil. So kind of a cool little thing to see right here at the end of a botanical garden. All right, so now we're in the Patrick Seymour Alpine Garden, um, mainly kind of like a woodland garden, lots of ground covers, shrubs, trees, spruce fir, all that kind of stuff. Really rocky, kind of nice, beautiful area to walk through. So yeah, definitely stop by and check out this area. Yeah, so once you're done touring the garden, make your way back to the Welcome Center. On the back side, you'll find a couple washrooms and a little cafe, some patio chairs, lots of flowers, great place just to hang out, have a cold drink and a snack. All right, so that concludes the trip to the Botanical Garden. Overall, not too bad. A great place to come for a walk. Uh, wish there was a few more plants in some sections, like the Aga Khan Garden. But overall, a uh, decent place for a walk. Value's not too bad. Uh, yeah, I highly recommend coming and checking her out if you're here in the Edmonton area. It's a great way to spend a morning.